the subject, taking off to get close, taking off to get close. In our study this morning, we learned that God got Moses' attention when he allowed the burning bush to be in Moses' view. And because of Moses never seeing any phenomenon of that nature, Moses gets closer. And as he gets closer, God tells Moses, do not come any closer. And uh, we looked at this morning how that there may be something that gets our attention in our life. and. Uh, in it getting our attention, we seek to get closer to God. But God says to Moses, do not come any closer. Take off your shoes. And this morning we talked about how that Moses had traveled 300 plus miles to get away from Egypt. He had found a new home, a new family. He has a new wife. He has a new son. And God had plans for Moses, which required Moses to leave the land of Median. He was content there, the Bible says, but God called upon him to leave Median. And there are times when we have to take off some things in order for God to use us in his plan uh, to save the world. This evening, we're going to go a little further and look at the fact that when it comes down to uh, giving uh, up our own desires and following after Christ, we have to be willing to decide if we are able to fully commit to that lifestyle of giving up our own desires and following after Christ. Giving up desires involves making a distinction between having natural desires and fulfilling natural desires in an ungodly way. Some have concluded that natural desires are evil, not acknowledging that God gave us natural desires. If I have a desire to eat, uh, if I have a desire to uh, drink or quench thirst, that's a natural desire. My body has to have nourishment. My thirst has to be quenched, else my body will not function. These are natural desires. However, there is a difference in having natural desires and fulfilling our natural desires in, in ungodly ways. If I eat the wrong thing, if I drink the wrong thing, now I am fulfilling a natural desire in an ungodly way. But there are some individuals who conclude that natural desires are evil. So thus we find ourselves when we can't make that distinction, we find ourselves saying something like this. I need to deny my flesh of what it craves for. Uh, so we deny our flesh for what uh, we deny our flesh of what it craves for. So our flesh has cravings. Uh, we do have uh, drives, as uh, sociologists, psychologists, psychiatrists say, we have natural 
or drives. So sometimes we say, I need to deny my flesh. Now, in our effort to do so, what does the Holy Spirit teach us? In our effort to, to deny our flesh, what does the Holy Spirit teach us? The Christian must decide after whom they will walk according to Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1. The Holy Spirit guided Paul to write, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. To walk after the flesh, that carries the idea of our our walk is our attitude. Our walk is our deportment. Our walk is what is guiding us. Our walk is what we allow to direct us. So if we allow the flesh to shape and mold our attitude, if we allow the flesh to shape and mold our deportment or our culture or our way of life, if we allow the flesh to dictate, to orchestrate what we will and what we will not do. And of course, the flesh in this text is also noted as the sinful nature, then we are under the condemnation of, of the Lord. But there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, they walk after the Spirit. Now, to walk after the Spirit is to believe in Jesus. Now, believing in Jesus, it involves our attitude about Jesus. I want to invite your attention to John chapter 6 and verse 40 through 41. Now, in John chapter 6, this is uh, Jesus. He is in an episode where many of the disciples have followed him. And uh, when they reach Jesus, when they catch up with Jesus, then Jesus asks them the reason why they were following him. Now, Jesus says to them something about following him. If they follow him, they're going to have eternal life. Now, in order for them to have eternal life, they must believe that he came from above. He came from heaven. He talked about how that God rained down manna from heaven uh, for the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. And Jesus then said, I am that bread from heaven. Now, the question that I want to put before us regarding the text is, did they immediately believe that Jesus came from heaven. Let's watch what the text says in John chapter 6, starting at verse number 40. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Now, when Jesus uh, divided uh, the five loaves of bread and the two fish, they were 
happy to eat that meal that Jesus provided. They were happy to partake of that miraculous meal that Jesus provided. And they believed in him. They believed in him to the point that they followed him after that meal. Jesus departed. They followed him after that meal. But when Jesus tells them that he's the bread from heaven, they didn't believe that. They believed in him to eat the meal. They believed in him to follow him after eating the meal, but they did not believe him to the point that they would believe that they would obtain eternal life through following him because he's the one that God sent from heaven to save the world from their sin. Listen to the text. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? In other words, if we are going to walk after the Spirit, we must believe everything that Jesus said. We must believe everything about Jesus. We must believe what he said. We must believe his promises. We must apply what he says, his character, his nature, to our lives. When we say, I need to deny my flesh of what it craves, then I must allow the Holy Spirit to guide me. Remember, the core value says the worth I place on my mind and my mental and physical well-being, realizing that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me. And I know that the Holy Spirit gives me God worth rather than other worth. And the Holy Spirit compels me. There's my walk now. The Holy Spirit compels me to take care of my mind and my body so that God can use me. So so we walk. So how do I deny my flesh of what it craves? I adjust my walk because if, if I am walking after the flesh, then I am going to crave the things of the flesh, and I'm going to yield to the things of the flesh. But if I'm walking after the Spirit, I'm going to crave the things. Now, Paul, later on in Romans chapter 8, he's going to say, when you're walking after the Spirit, you're going to mind the things of the Spirit. In other words, you're going to observe, you're going to learn, and you're going to practice the ways, the teachings of the Spirit. When you're walking after the flesh, you're going to practice the ways and the teachings of the flesh. So when I need to follow God fully and I need to deny my flesh, how do I do that? How do I do that? I walk after the Spirit. Then some say, I need to deny myself of earthly pleasures that can pollute my mind. Now, following Jesus is not fun. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to be fully committed to the lifestyle of giving up my own desires, and I'm going to follow after Christ. Now, that some individuals understand that to mean I need to deny myself of earthly pleasures that can pollute my mind. Now, if you remember years ago in the church, individuals had a, uh, a, 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 a great discussion about recreation. I can remember where there was a discussion regarding whether or not it was a sin 
to play cards, whether it was a sin to play dominoes. If you were at church and you said, well, we're going to play dominoes and cards, some individual's eyebrows would rise because, hey, Christians are not supposed to do that. We had long discussions about whether or not a person uh, was to uh, engage in recreational activity because some individuals believe that you had to deny yourself of earthly pleasure because if you uh, if you engaged in earthly pleasure, that was going to pollute your mind. If you listen to certain music, it's going to pollute your mind. If if you uh, if you dance. That's going to pollute your mind. You're going to engage in something that's immoral. Uh, so, so we've had this this issue. So, what do we do about it? If I'm going to be fully committed, I'm going to be fully committed to uh, a lifestyle of giving up. I'm taking off. I'm going to give up of, of, of my desires, and I'm going to follow after Christ. What do I do about my earthly pleasures that can pollute my mind? Well, well, understand that following Jesus is not fun. Following Jesus is not fun. We've had this discussion many times. I just want to remind us, remind me that following Jesus is not fun. And here's the reason why it's not fun. It's not fun because Satan constantly attempts to destroy our view of God as being good. He has done that ever since the Garden of Eden. Here's Adam and Eve. They have no problem in their marriage. They have no problem in worship. They have no problem with the lifestyle of having dominion over all the earth. They had no problems at all. And Satan comes along, and he attempts, and he succeeds in ruining their view of God. And Adam and Eve winds up eating the forbidden fruit. And guess what the devil does today? He attempts to ruin our view of God. He did it to Judas. Remember Judas? Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, 30 pieces of silver. So when it comes down to me denying myself of earthly pleasures, I have to remember that what pollutes my mind, the way my mind gets polluted, is through allowing myself to have a view of God that is absent and apart from what the Bible tells us about God. See, God Satan says, Satan says, um, he says, uh, uh, you're not going to die. God knows that when you eat of this fruit, you'll be as God, knowing good and evil, trying to change the view of God. So, so once we uh, understand that God is supreme. We uh, we understand that God is able. We understand that God is unbeatable. God is undefeated. We can never, we can never succeed without God. We're nothing without God. That's the beginning of our decision. You know, what does God want me to do? How does God want me to think? How, how, how is God uh, guiding me in my communication, in my deeds, in my thought process? And when God is at the front of my mind, when I'm seeking God first, then I will not allow my mind to be polluted with the things that Satan is trying to give the world to turn them away from God. So my mind is polluted. My mind is polluted. 
and as a result of my mind being polluted, then my relationship with God becomes polluted. I'm going to give you an example about Judas. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And we count up the silver. We say that Judas uh, betrayed Jesus for the price of a common slave. But you got to remember that Jesus and the disciples, they moved about from place to place off of donations, off of things of things that individuals gave them. You remember uh, in um, uh, John uh, chapter 12, you see uh, there uh, the ointment that was uh, placed upon Jesus. And you remember Judas' statement uh, that that ointment could be sold for money and the money be placed in the bag. Judas had the bag because they lived off of the donations of other people. Now, was it wrong for them to receive donations? No. Was it wrong for someone to give 30 pieces of silver to put in the bag so that the disciples could have funds to travel from place to place? No, it was not. But Judas' mind became polluted. His mind became polluted. He wants the money because of his polluted mind. So when our mind is polluted, then we're going to make choices sometimes that don't represent uh, the Lord. Wearing a dress is not uh, wrong. Wearing a suit, wearing a shirt and pant pant is not wrong. But when your mind is polluted, then the things that don't even seem like they're wrong will become something other than what it seems because a mind is polluted. And then last and finally, here's, here's another statement that we make. I can't focus on carrying my cross when I'm distracted by everything that passes. Distractions are not attractive when you are rooted and grounded in the truth. I'm distracted by everything that passes. In other words, when something passes, then I'm following after it. But distractions are not attractive when you're rooted and grounded in the truth. Listen to what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 10. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Watch this now. He says, after, after you walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, rooted and built up in him, rooted and built up means that you are, you are convicted. You are convinced. You are convicted. You don't have any doubt whatsoever that Jesus is Christ. And he is Lord. And you are uh, taught and you are thankful that God has given you a life in Christ. Now, now that you're rooted, you're built up in him, he says, beware. Does anyone cheat you through philosophy, empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles? Just because you're rooted in Christ does not mean distractions will not come. But when the distractions come, you are not going to be turned away from him. Why? You are rooted and you are built up in him. Everything that you need, when when the Bible says, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, 
everything that you need to be a child of God, everything that you need to have favor with God, everything that you need to have eternal life with God, have the hope of eternal life with God is in Christ Jesus. You don't need another organization. You don't need another entity. You don't need another family. Everything that you need is in Christ Jesus. And when other things come along and they try to pull you away, the, the devil will try to talk to you and say things about being in Christ Jesus, being a member of the Church of Christ. You are not going to be driven away by those distractions because you are rooted and you are built up in him. And I, I talk about coming to Bible class and being at worship all the time. But that's where we become rooted. Fellowship is where we become rooted. Our ability to have strong relationships in Christ Jesus. We love each other. We help each other. We care for each other. Those relationships are all a part of us being rooted and built up in Christ Jesus, studying the Word of God constantly, digging deep, improving your study skills, it all is a part of being rooted, understanding that your knowledge in Christ is not the same as what the world says. Uh, you, can't, that you can't get everything you have in Christ Jesus from the world. Every church in the uh, a United States in the world is not the Church of Christ. All of that is a part of being rooted and built up in, in Christ Jesus. People can call you narrow-minded. People can call you brainwashed. They can say those things, but the way you see it, the way you see it, I'm rooted and I'm built up in Christ Jesus. Sometimes people in the church act right. Sometimes people in the church fall short. Sometimes people in the church blatantly disobey God in other folks' presence. But you are not saved by people. You don't have the hope of eternal life in people. You are rooted and built up in Jesus Christ. You might get sick. Something unfortunate happens and you are a victim of it. None of that changes. None of that changes your relationship with Jesus when you're rooted and built up in Christ Jesus. When you are striving to be fully committed to a lifestyle of giving up your own desires and following after Christ, you must walk after the Spirit. You must understand that Satan constantly attempts to destroy your view of God, and you must be rooted and built up in Christ Jesus so that you will not follow after any and every distraction. If you hear this evening and you want to follow Christ, you want to be closer to God, and you put off some things in your life, you put off some immoral things. You've put off some anger and some malice, and, and you're striving to adjust your attitude, but it seems like there's still something uh, keeping you from being closer to God and being used by him. Check who you're walking after. Are you walking after the flesh? Are you walking after the spirit? <laughs> do, you do you believe everything? There are some individuals who are not grossly immoral, but they don't believe everything about Jesus. Do you believe everything about him? Do you believe that Satan attempts to change your view of God and you're not grossly immoral, but you got all these question marks about things, different things. And then sometimes you just, I'm searching, I'm seeking. Every, every time something comes along, I'm going to search after that. I'm going to follow after that. Be rooted and grounded. In Jesus. Rededicate your life to Jesus by repentance, confession, and prayer. You're not a Christian. Become a Christian by believing that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. The blood he shed at Calvary purchased the church of God, the church of Christ. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Acts 20, verse 28. Believe that gospel. Mark 16, 15 and 16. 
Repent, Acts 2 and verse 38. Confess Jesus, Acts 8, 37. We'll baptize you, Acts 2 and verse 38. The Lord will add you to his church. He'll add you to the church of Christ, Acts 2 and verse 47. And at Romans 16 and verse 16, be that anyone's desire. We beg you to acknowledge yourself after we sing a verse of a song. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die, till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. 